Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of hand-tinted vintage photos from contemporary photos. This is an update of tutorials I've done on earlier versions of Photoshop. This update is for versions CC and later. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, hit that small subscribe button at the lower right to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I provided this film texture that we'll be using in this tutorial. Its link is in my video's description below the video or in my project files. Open a photo that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one and the others from Shutterstock. We'll place our photo onto the film texture. If your Move tool isn't active, press V on your keyboard and drag your photo onto the tab of the film texture. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. To resize and position it, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. If you're using CC 2019 or later, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. To reposition it, go inside and drag it. When you're happy with its size and position, press Enter or Return. If your photo is larger than the film texture, there'll be areas extending past our visible window. We'll crop off those areas to save file size and to ensure that the filters that we'll be adding won't factor in those areas that extend beyond our window. To crop it, press Ctrl or Command A to select the window and go to Image and Crop. Then deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make the radius 5 pixels. Next, we'll reveal back the sharpness in the center. To do this, click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the copy. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. We'll adjust its size in a moment. Its hardness is 0% and its opacity and flow are both 100%. To adjust the brush's size, make sure your caps lock key is off and press the left or right bracket key on your keyboard. Make it approximately this size and left click. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, shift click the bottom subject layer to make it active as well and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Click the Effects icon. Make the grain amount 80, the size 100, and the roughness 60. Make the post crop vignetting amount minus 100, the midpoint 40, the roundness 0, the feather 100, and the highlights 100. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Vibrance. Make the Vibrance minus 50. Open the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the black-white Adjustments icon. Drag the reds and the yellows to 300 each. Change the Blend Mode to Difference and reduce its opacity to 15%. Click the lock icon next to the film texture background to unlock it. We'll jump the layer to the top of the Layers panel by pressing Ctrl or Command plus the right bracket key three times. Change its Blend Mode to Lighten. Lastly, we'll add an overall sepia tone. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Color Balance. 
In the mid-tones, make the cyan red 20 and the yellow blue minus 20. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.